Peggy Ann Dodd. Peggy Ann Dodd was 29 when she went missing in December of 1984, and while there is no clue to where she grew up or called home, she was last seen in Houston, Texas. So very little is known about her, although she was listed online in a variety of places, along with a few photos. It's sad how limited the information is on a lot of older cases. We do know her family kept looking, and it appears the 5 foot 5 inch tall, 120 pound woman was likely traveling at the time she went missing. She was found with a duffel bag containing underwear, jeans, and shoes, even a nightgown and a Sears hairdryer. She would be found on the Manford Williams Ranch in Ben County, Texas. Although they could determine her age, weight, height, and that she had brown hair, they couldn't determine her cause of death. It was DNA technology that would solve this case four decades later, thanks to Intermountain Forensics. It's unclear if there is any possibility of determining whether or not there was foul play, or perhaps she was hitchhiking and succumbed to the elements. She was found about a mile east of the highway. If anyone knows what Peggy was doing at the time, or has any information on her movements, please call the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office at 281-341-4646. Had Peggy lived, she would be 67 today. Peggy Ann Dodd went unidentified for 38 years. The Sacramento John Doe, identified as Norman Creech. Norman Lee Creech was last seen on November 25, 1983. He had just turned 26 five days earlier. He spent the next 38 years essentially frozen at the age of 26. He was close to his family, especially his siblings, and they were alarmed that he had suddenly fallen out of contact. Unlike so many cases we cover, there was an actual disturbance that pinpoints when he went missing and provides at least a little context as to why that may have been. Norman lived on the 3000 block of Bell Street in Sacramento in November of 1983, and on the 25th, Norman's neighbors were startled awake to screaming and loud banging coming from his apartment. Witnesses reported that Norman had either met or was dragged outside and was then being assaulted by two men. The neighbors reported hearing the men demand the location of drugs inside his apartment. The sounds abruptly stopped five minutes after they began. By the time the police arrived, Norman went missing as well as the men. He was described as a dealer, and he had a history, apparently, of cheating his customers out of money or product. That wasn't all he was, though. He also had a good relationship with his family, especially his siblings. Unbeknownst to his family, he was found six months later, in May of 1984 discovered on the rocks of the Sacramento deep water ship channel during a low tide. All they really knew at the time was that he was a male of average build and his death was classified as suspicious. Despite the close proximity of where he went missing and where he was found, we didn't piece this together. That wouldn't change for the next 38 years, although now the circumstances of his disappearance definitely affect the investigation. They now have a place to start. His identification came almost exactly 38 years to the day that he was found. Norman Creech went unidentified for 38 years. Had he lived, he would be 64 today. The Houston Jane Doe, 1971, identified as Patricia Elaine Thomas Bordeaux. Patricia Thomas Wardell was just 18 years old when the young wife and mother went missing from Houston, Texas. Her daughter Cynthia was just a year old. That little girl never stopped looking for her mother. Her family told investigators they had last seen her days before her 18th birthday. The young mom was working part-time at a discount store and attending Durham Business College downtown. She was last seen catching the bus on the corner of Bennington and Hirsch Road. This was after class, but she didn't return home, and she never picked up her last paycheck. Eventually, that paycheck would be picked up by her husband. It turns out that Patricia's skeletal remains were found that following year, in 1971, in the same city she went missing. 
Houston, Texas. She was found where the Beltway 8 Toll Road is now, but at the time it didn't exist. At the time it was just a wooded area. It's possible that height and weight discrepancies were to blame for authorities not matching the remains right away. She was between 5'1 and 5'6, and one report listed her as 5'10. Her daughter would refer to the years of her being missing as a bad nightmare. She was too young to remember her mother. She existed by writing letters to programs like Unsolved Mysteries, looking for anyone to listen and help her find her mom. As an adult, she hired private detectives. Once the money came, there were no details. Several of Patricia's family members gave DNA to the Houston police back in 2016, hoping that might lend a clue to what had happened to her. They were shocked to find out that Patricia had been buried all that time, only a few minutes from where they live, something that shocked her brother Raymond, who's 82, saying it's very difficult to begin to process. It's hard to understand. It's hard to wrap your head around after all these years. She's been so close to all this time, he said. Robert, 82 now, was a TSU student when his baby sister went missing. It's been very difficult, he would say. Patricia's sister, Maxine, is now 75, and she also describes the passing of the years as horrible. Her brother, Leroy, 72, said that even though it is a bad outcome, still a good outcome, if that makes sense. They finally know where she is after all of these years. Cynthia has had difficulty processing what happened to her mother saying, and now maybe I can really and truly try to be happy. And that's what I'm going to get because I'm all messed up right now, she said tearfully. Way too often, disappearances like this, they don't only take the life of somebody. They rob their whole family of happiness and the ability to even process what happened to the person they love. No one is quite sure what happened to Patricia. Cynthia said her father was questioned by police, but was never charged so there's no way to know if it was her husband or somebody else, saying, The person who took my mom away, they ruined my whole life. I want my mom to know I'm going to find out who did this to her, and they will pay. It's unclear if Patricia's former husband is still alive to be questioned again. The Harris County Sheriff's Office is now investigating the murder of Patricia Thomas Wardell. If anyone has any information at all, please call the number on the screen. Patricia went unidentified for 51 years. Thank you everybody for watching and listening. If you could help to get the channel noticed by the YouTube algorithm by liking and leaving a comment, even if you can just leave a thumbs up or some emoji, it counts as engagement. It would be so appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Thanks everyone. Take care of yourselves and each other.